back here. I thought it was time to end all this. To try and be like a father and daughter. I have no daughter. Mommy, is everything all right? I got worried. Everything is wonderful. What about Grandfather? All worked out. I told you everything was going to be OK. If you want to help my daughter, I suggest you pray for her soul. It's more important, Reverend, that I pray for yours. me. All set, Kitty? Mom, you should see the stuff in this book. It's so gross. It shows people with their whole insides sticking out. Oh, don't tell me. I could never be a doctor. <laughs> I don't know how they look at all that stuff without barfing. What did the doctor say? Oh, you know doctors. They're all so confusing. He must have said something. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you over a hot dog. I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> The doctor thought it would be good for me to get away for a while. A change, you know. You mean like a vacation? No, more permanent. You mean move away? Yeah. But all my friends are here. And what about your job? I'm going to give notice today. Um, do we have to? I like my school. Yes, we have to. Oh, Amy, I'm so sorry. 
You see, that's why I have to get away. I need a rest. You understand? If it'll make you better, do whatever you want. But where do we go? To California to see your grandparents. But you said that... I know what I said, but it's been years, and people change. I've changed. I'm sure my father's changed. It's not right that he hasn't seen his own granddaughter. Honey, I know it's all of a sudden, but it's for the best. Believe me. You upset? Yeah. You mad? Yeah. You get over it? Yeah. <laughs> sure. It's just a one-bedroom apartment, but uh, the sofa opens up. It's comfortable. Mm-hmm. Hey, nice kitchen in here, Mark. I think this will be just fine. I insist on a year's lease. First and last month in advance and a cleaning deposit. Oh, well, you see, actually, we were just planning to stay about a month. Uh, sorry, a year's lease or nothing. Oh, I'm afraid it's just not going to work out. Now, old Charlie Dern told us things would be different in California. Charlie Dern? Oh, yeah, he's just an old friend of ours from back home. Well, we're going to have to look somewhere else, but thank you very much. Where are you two from? Iowa. Marrington. Well, I don't believe it. I do. I'm from Marrington. You're not going to believe this. Yes, I am. But I used to date Charlie Dern. No. Oh, no, come on. I don't. A, a tall, red-headed guy? That's him. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Wait a minute. You are not Betty? Better known as Betty Boop to oh. Charlie? Charlie didn't talk about me, did he? Talked about you? He talks about you all the time. I think he's still carrying the torch. <gasps> what a small world. <gasps> oh, isn't it? Oh, listen, just forget about what I said about the lease. You're welcome to stay as long as you need. Oh, that's very, very kind of you. Mrs. Hardy. Yes? All the power's off in my apartment. <sighs> Did you try your fuse box? Yes, I pushed the breaker, but it just clicked right off. I, I must be assured of something. Well, I, I can't get an electrician out here today. It's Sunday. And they're going to charge me an arm and a leg. Hey, I'd be happy to take a look at it. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. I'd appreciate it. No problem at all. I'll be back in a few minutes. I just can't get over it. You two knowing my old boat, Charlie. <laughs> What a shock! Yeah, <laughs> was to me too. The fuse box is right over there on the wall. All right, let me take a look. Let's see. Now, how did you do that? I tried for ten minutes. Aha! Uh -huh. It is magic. Mommy! Mommy, it's fixed! I know, thanks to Mr... Uh, Jonathan Smith. I'm Marcia Stearns, and this is my daughter, Amy. Amy, how you doing? Fine. I hope I get a chance to return the favor. Oh, come on, it was nothing. Well, I better get back and get settled in. Good seeing you, Amy. Bye. Thank you again. Oh. Oh, you know, I, I've got one question. I want to go to church this morning, and I wondered if there was one in the neighborhood somewhere. Yes, as a matter of fact, we're going this morning, too. Hey, Maybe we could ride together. Well, it's all right. I, I understand. We'll probably see you there. Mr. Smith. Yeah? We should be there at 9.45. Takes about 10 minutes by car. All right. Let's play it safe. I'll meet you out front at 9.30. All right. See you then. OK. Are you nervous? Of course not. Liar. Nine years. It's a long time. A long time. What shall we do with those less fortunate in our midst? Shall we say they didn't try hard enough? They don't want to work? All they want is a handout? It is easy to say that and pass them by. It's easy because we don't have to make the effort to help them. That's right, the effort. It takes 
doing, doing for others. But what rewards, what a gift we receive when we open our hearts to our fellow man. Ask yourself these questions. What can I do? How can I help? What am I not doing that must... What am I not doing that must be done to help? Ask yourself these questions each and every one of you. And you will find a new purpose to life. Wonderful sermon, is it? Brad, see you Wednesday. Father. This is Amy, your granddaughter. How's Mom? She's well. That's good. You look wonderful. You haven't changed. No. No, I haven't changed at all. I... Uh, I wondered if we could talk. We have nothing to talk about. We haven't had for years. Amy, go wait with Jonathan for a minute, okay? She's a wonderful child. Why did you come back here? I thought it was time to end all this. To try and be like a father and daughter. I have no daughter. She died nine years ago. Whoever you are, please go. You know, I was praying. Oh, wishing, praying. Just a guess. I haven't prayed for a long time. Shame, shame. You, the daughter of a minister. I heard you call to him today. I haven't seen him in such a long time. I can tell. You could? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people have been close and then separated for whatever reason. I always seem to have a very strange kind of uncomfortableness. <laughs> Silly word, but it suits. Yes, it does. I guess you could tell it didn't go very well today. It's amazing how we kid ourselves. I really believed I could come back and everything would be as it was before. Before what? Before I got pregnant and became imperfect. Why am I talking to you like this? Because I'm a stranger and another very imperfect human being. And believe me, there's a lot of us out there. <laughs> Not my father. He's perfect. Oh, come on. You don't believe that. He does. That's the important thing. Makes you angry, doesn't it? Yes, damn it. But he's my father and... You know what? And he's my father. My father, the minister. Oh, do you know what that's like growing up? Growing up with the perfect father that everyone reveres. Oh, I mean, reveres. He's not just a person. He's got the inside track on God. When he tells you you've sinned, you have sinned. And have you? I have a child. I don't have a husband. That's a sin, isn't it? Not giving a child love is a sin. I love her more than anything in the world. 
Then where's the sin? Then how can he make me feel so guilty? Oh, people who judge others rely on guilt. She keeps them from having to deal with their own feelings. you get back to your praying. about today. Sarah, who is it? It's uh, Mrs. Angus about the bazaar. Does she want to talk to me? No. Well, it's all right. I'll take care of it. Marsh, I've missed you so. Can I see you tomorrow? Of course. Your father will be gone by nine. You understand? Yes. I'll see you then. Marsh? The child? I'll bring her. Good night, Mom. Good night, darling. It was Marsha, wasn't it? No, I told you it was, um... It was Marsha. Yes. She wants to see me. Sarah, I've told you today... David, she's I... my daughter. That little girl is our grandchild. What happened, happened. It was nine years ago. I know how long ago it was. I have tried for all that time to forget it, to block it out of my mind, but I will not let her come back here seeking our forgiveness. No. She's coming tomorrow. I want to see her. Then we will put an end to it tomorrow. I'm sorry if I startled you. Oh, it's all right. I didn't hear you come in. Do I know you? No. I'm not a regular member of the congregation. I did hear your sermon today, though. It was very good. Thank you. Mr... Uh... Jonathan Smith. Mr. Smith. I hate to bother you now, but I wondered if I could talk to you, ask some advice. Of course. Sit down. That's very kind of you. See, I, I have a friend who's had a falling out with her family, and she desperately wants to get back with them because she loves them very much. Mm -hmm. but her father just won't bend. I was wondering if there was any chance of your getting them together, talking to them, counseling them. Yeah, of course. At least I can try. Why don't I give you my, my card? They can call me anytime. Mm -hmm. We can meet here or at. Uh, my house, if that would be more comfortable for them. Oh, it's very kind of you. The, the problem is going to be getting the father to come. The daughter's more than willing. Well, perhaps I can talk with him. Do you know where to reach him? Right here. What? Right. The father I'm speaking of, Reverend, is you. What is this? Did my daughter put you up to this? No, your daughter doesn't even know I'm here. My relationship with my daughter has absolutely nothing to do with you. I never said it did. I'm only asking if you'll speak to her. We have said everything that can be said to each other. 
You're willing to sit down with two strangers, but you can't do the same thing for your own child. My daughter is an adulteress. Did she tell you that? No. I didn't think so. Should it make a difference? Even someone on death row has a man of the cloth to talk to. Do you consider your daughter worse than a murderer? They are asking for forgiveness. She never asked for my forgiveness. She wasn't sorry for what she did then, and she's not sorry for it now. She has a wonderful child. Should she be sorry for her existence? This discussion is over, Mr. Smith. If you want to help my daughter, I suggest you pray for her soul. It's more important, Reverend, that I pray for yours. There's lots to see around here. Disneyland, Magic Mountain. You like rides? I've never been on any big ones. <laughs> well, they'll scare the pants off you, but they're great. Can we go sometime, Mom? Sure. I'll bring an air sickness bag. It's a right at the next corner, fourth house on the right. OK. This is your grandmother. Hello, Amy. Hello, grandmother. I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a silly old lady. I've just waited so long to hear hello, grandmother. I don't think you're silly. Good. Your father's here. He knew it was you on the phone. I tried to talk to him again last night, but you know how he can be. Yeah, I know. Do you think it might be better if I come with you? No, it's all right. I want to speak to both of you. Jonathan, could Amy stay with you for an hour? I've got some things to straighten out. Sure, no problem. I'll meet you back at the apartment in an hour or so. OK. We'll get some ice cream. Nothing like ice cream for breakfast. Why doesn't grandfather like me? I told you, sweetie, it has nothing to do with you. It's between your grandfather and me. We're both kind of stubborn. Everything will work out. Now go on. Hello again, Father. My mother told me you were coming. I wanted to be sure you understood what I told you yesterday. David! It's all right, Mother. I understood perfectly. I'm not here expecting to be welcomed back with open arms. I came to talk about your granddaughter. Can we sit down? I'm at a crossroads in my life. I've done fairly well in the advertising business, and I have the opportunity to become a full partner in the firm. But it means constant travel. And that's impossible with a child. You can stop right there. I see what's coming. First, the child stays here for a while. 
Then you visit. No, no. I'm not going to let you use your daughter. Would you shut up for once and listen? My daughter needs a family, not just a mother who'll be gone all the time. What I am asking is, will you take your granddaughter and raise her in this house? Until it's convenient for you to come back for her? No. For good. Marsh, you can't do that. Mother, I'm doing what's best for the child. I know how you feel about me. But Amy is your grandchild. She's all the family you have. She had nothing to do with what happened. She's a lovely, loving child who needs you. You would give up your daughter, your own daughter, for a job? Yes. It shouldn't surprise you. You know the way I am. All right, suppose we say yes. How do we know that you won't change your mind and come back for her? You have my word. I'm a sinner, not a liar. That's not good enough. I'll have any legal papers made out that you want. Marsh, think about what you're doing. Have you said anything about this to the child? Not yet, but I will. I wanted her to be with both of you a while. Learn to feel safe. Then I can tell her. Mother, please. I know what I'm doing. I'll leave at the end of the week. I'll tell her it's a business trip for a few months. It'll give you time. Well? All right. I'll go then. Love her. decided to go for a walk. What about Grandfather? All worked out. I told you everything was going to be OK. I'll tell you all about it later. Right now, I feel like doing something. Can we go to the amusement park? Mark said he'd take us. Do you really want to go? There you go again. We asked, didn't we? Then let's go. Even my beard would turn green. <laughs> OK, scaredy cat, so we're going to go it alone. Can't believe the difference in that girl. Sure glad she got things worked out with her dad. It's an act. What? It's an act. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. If I can get my work done sooner, I will. Promise? Promise. 
Now you're going to have fun. Grandparents love to spoil children. So don't take advantage. Maybe just a little bit? All right. <laughs> now you get some sleep. You and I are going to be very busy the next few days. What are we going to do? Tell me. We're going to do everything. The beach, the theater, you name it, we'll do it. Oh, Mom. I love you. I love you, too. Now off to sleep. Yes, ma'am. Mom? Leave the whole light on, okay? Okay. See you in the morning. Now, what do you think you're doing? Yeah, well, I thought I was doing dishes. I can do that. Well, then so can I. Here, you try. Oh, Mark said good night. I noticed he was having trouble keeping his eyes open at dinner. <laughs> I know it. Well, you're sure full of energy today. I know. I feel hyper. Well, it's probably from getting everything straight now with your father. It is. It's like a weight being lifted off me. Guess what I did today? Let me see. Uh, ran around an amusement park. Before that. Can't guess. I went and saw Amy's father. What, you just bumped into him? No, I... I went by where he worked. I wasn't sure he'd still be there, but he was. Did you talk to him? No. I just looked. Silly, huh? No. No, I don't think that's silly. He doesn't even know about Amy. Why didn't you tell him? Because he was married. Why do I always tell you everything? It's like I said, sometimes it's easier to talk to strangers. You don't seem like a stranger to me. You seem like an old friend. I'm glad. Amy wasn't a mistake, you know. It's hard to explain, but I loved him so much. And I knew, no matter how he felt, that he would never leave his family. I wanted to have his baby. Did you ever tell your father that? Lord, no. He wouldn't have listened. And if he had, he wouldn't have understood. How did you manage to change his mind today? I guess he's just mellowing with age. Are you all right? Yeah. The day's catching up to me. Don't blame me. I'll get out of your hair. Thanks again for dinner. Thank you for being a friend. You got a lot more of them than you know. Good night. Good night. What's the matter? You've been pacing around like that ever since you came in. I don't know. I sense something. What about Marcia? Yeah. Sure, you're not just bothered. She straightened things out with her father and you couldn't. Oh, come on, Mark. No, I mean, she looked awful happy tonight. Jonathan! Amy, honey, what's wrong? My mom! She fell in the bathroom and I can't get her up. All right, I'm coming. Mark, you call an ambulance, see if you can get a hold of her folks. Come on. Jonathan? Oh, Sarah, where's David? He wouldn't come. How's Marsh? This is Dr. Gottlieb. Doctor. Your daughter's resting. She's conscious. She just overdid today. Thank God. Will she have to stay in the hospital long? No. We can release her in a day or so. But if she wants to stretch the time that she has left, you'd better see to it that she doesn't weaken herself this way. The time she has left? I... I, I certainly thought that you'd know. Know what? 
not. Your daughter is terminally ill. I contacted a doctor in New York. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you knew. How did you get in here? That doesn't matter. Your daughter needs you now. Oh. Well, I know she's in the hospital, but let me tell you something. That is an act. She wants us to feel sorry for her. Now, let me tell you something. It will not work. No. I told her that we would raise that child if she went away and never came back. She said she would. Now she wants our pity so that we will take her in. Well, the answer is no. You can tell her that for me. Your daughter will keep her promise about not coming back. You see, she's dying, Reverend. Oh, that's a lie. Oh, no. She's known for some time. That's why she came back here. You're lying. She would have told me. She didn't tell you because she wanted you to take her daughter in out of love, not out of pity. She wanted to give her daughter a chance to feel secure with your love before she had to face her mother's dying. And she carried that inside all by herself for her loved ones. Amazing, isn't it? After everything you've done, your daughter still loves you. And you call that child of God a sinner. Jonathan. My wife has taken the car. May I go with you? Yes. Things didn't work out quite the way I'd planned. I thought about telling you that. I... I understand. I wanted to hurt you the way you had hurt me. And the longer we've been apart, the more I wanted to forget you. Can you ever forgive me? Forgive you? I don't want you to go away. I want you to stay here with us. We have so much to say. 
in so little time. Please don't go. Please, daughter. Don't go. Before I start my sermon today, I would very much like to introduce you to two very important people in my life. My daughter, Marsha, and my granddaughter, Amy. We speak often of how much children and learn from their parents. I'd like to talk today about what I learned from my child. It deals with judging others. Oh, we all do it. You do it. Your minister does it. We read about someone in a newspaper, someone we don't even know, and we judge them. We judge our friends. We judge our loved ones. And in so doing, we play God. Well, not the type of God we worship here. No, for he is the last to judge. Why then should we take it upon ourselves to do so? We even judge someone for worshiping in a different manner than we do. And by so doing, we create prejudice. A man asked me once, if I had my choice, would I rather face an atheist with a gun or a Christian with a gun? Of course, I told him I'd rather face neither. <laughs> but you see, what he was really saying was that because the one man said he was a Christian, he was automatically better than the atheist. Is that true, or is that just a judgment? You cannot go to heaven if you don't believe in God. Is that true? Or am I merely judging by saying, yes? Am I supposed to believe that someone who has led a good life and helped others will be condemned by God because he doesn't believe? I don't think so. I do not believe that God looks so much for recognition as he does for the good in each and every one of us. Spend your time on this earth loving, not judging. And then we will truly be the children of God. Thank you.